the grounds of a hospital. Dee Dee and Gogo lie on cots. They are set apart outside the reach of their mutually outstretched arms. Their legs are covered in threadbare blankets. It's clouds I'll miss. Gogo, I said it's clouds I'll miss. Clouds? Yes, clouds. I'll miss them, which is odd because they're so hard to miss. In this position, they're all that you see. They dominate the view. Even standing, they still hog half the vista. Unless you're standing at a lakeside, then it's full dominance once again. But still, I'll miss them. Go, go. I said still, I'll miss them. Clouds? Yes, the clouds. I shall miss them for two reasons. The first is that they have always taken me by surprise. I'll be going about my business, head down, eyes soaking in the vital details, gaze rigid, and then a straight tilt of my chin and <gasps> clouds. They were there the whole time. Yes. And the second reason I shall miss them is that clouds have never once required a decision from me. Explain, Dee Dee. Well, everything in the world demands a decision. A woman walks by. Shall I marry her? A tree looms. Shall I cut it down to fuel my winter fire? A mountain beckons. Shall I bore a tunnel through its heart? So to subjugate the people on the far side who naively trusted its inviolability. Difficult. Exactly. Wherever my eye rests, difficult decisions offering nothing but difficulties. So it has always been a comfort to look at the clouds. No matter what my ambitions, no matter what my appetites, the clouds remain forever above them. They're impervious to my designs. They're beyond my reach. Reach. <clears throat> Why do they do this to us, Dee Dee? For our own good, they say. Every morning, I think maybe they will miscalculate. Maybe they will misjudge. But no, always just out of reach. Maddening. Is the lawn marked, perhaps? Have we left permanent impressions in the grass that betray our dimensions? I have not noticed. I, I thought at night, you know. I cannot sleep, so why not plot? I example, Gogo. For instance, I skip my meals for a full day. Will that not make me lighter? And being lighter, might that not throw off the judgment of my bearers? For performing the same task day in and day out for... For... Forever. Haven't they become little more than automatons? And being automatons, are they not slave to a regularity of output? An exact effort rendered exactly. Alter their calculations of exertion by a mere ounce or two, uh, maybe even a pound or more if despair extends my fast, then might they not carry me a foot farther than instructed and place me thus at last in reach of you? Reach. It is they who have done this to us, Dee Dee. For our own good, they say. What do they know of good? They call themselves nurses. <coughs> we should believe them. Do we not? No. We do. They have nursed us. We have to give them credit there. We were at brink. Your foot. Your head. <laughs> Dangerously close to finally packing it in. 
Perhaps. What? Nothing. <laughs> A close shave. Yes. <laughs> they found me in my ditch. <laughs> That's where you'll find him, I said. It was not yet morning. I had spent the pitch black night tormented by hunger, fingering a hard object in my pocket and trying to remember whether it was a turnip or a stone. Why did you not bite it to find out? If I bit it and it was a turnip, I would be saved from starvation. But if I bit it and it was a rock, I would be doomed to such by the ruin of my last teeth. It's decisions that make living unbearable. Perhaps. What? Uh, nothing. At least decisions can no longer plague us. They wake us when it is time to wake. They feed us when it is time for us to eat. They bring us onto the grounds when it is time for us to breathe the air and feel the sun. But when will it be time for us to be together again, Dee Dee? I will ask them when they come to bring us in. Every day you say you will ask them, but you always forget. Today I will remember. And if not, tomorrow. Go, go, I said I will remember. And if not, tomorrow. Go, go. Yes. Did you close your eyes? Did I? You know you cannot close your eyes. If you close your eyes, you'll sleep. And if you sleep, you'll dream. But I cannot keep them open. They are so heavy. Come, as I do then. Dee Dee scooches his body up the cot until his head hangs over the edge. He lowers his head until it hangs upside down. Gogo does the same. They are now looking straight at each other. Now when you think that you're closing your eyes, you'll be opening them instead. The blood rushes to my head. It is very pleasurable. I do not like it. It roars in my ears. What? I said it roars in my ears. Yes, and many more to you as well. Go, go. Yes, Dee Dee. This is an odd perspective, Go, go. Yes. You appear completely natural to me. Yes. But the world is turned upside down. That is what I see every time I look at you, Dee Dee. You'll ask the nurses, Dee Dee? Yes. When we can be together again? Yes. You won't forget? No. Okay. It is good to look at you, Gogo. It is good to look at you, Dee Dee. I like the world like this. Yes, it is very pleasurable. Except. Yes, Dee Dee? I miss the clouds, Gogo. Reach. 